I want to share with you a phrase that was used yesterday to me, and it got me thinking enormously, which is why we are having today's topic that we're having. Somebody said yesterday, quite rightly, don't ever judge a book by its cover. Don't ever judge a book by its cover. And that got me thinking. It's, of course, we all know the phrase. It's a right phrase. Don't judge a book by its cover. But two things struck me in that phrase. The word judge. Because we sometimes feel we have a right to judge human beings. And yet this is a right that Allah reserves only for himself. And don't judge a book by its cover because we make these judgments based on what we can see. When the reality of how we look at one another as Muslims, as non-Muslims, as human beings is only Allah truly knows what is inside someone. So this phrase that we use quite freely in our society, don't judge your books by its cover, we don't realize quite how deep that phrase is about judgment, about looking at people. Let me give you a few examples of why this is so, so important and how if we do judge books by their cover, if we do take on ourselves this idea that we can judge one another, how destructive it can be for us, not for the other person, but for us who chooses to do the judgment. How destructive it can be. Now, if we have an idea that, for example, one of us might be really good at waking up with the hajjid, and we look at other people who can't wake up with the hajjid, and we say, oh, well, you know, look at me, I'm so pious, I wake up with the hajjid. But for somebody else, they struggle, they try, but they can't get up in that last third of the night. But what they can do is fast Mondays and Thursdays. Who's better? Only Allah knows. But sometimes the person of the Hajjad looks at the other person and says, I'm better. The person who fasts Monday and Thursday looks at people who can't fast Monday and Thursday and says, well, I'm obviously better. These are all really dangerous traits. Why? Because the moment you say, I'm better, who's the first person to say, I'm better? Shaitan. When he said in the conversation between him and Allah about Adam and said, Ana khairun min. I'm better than him. So the person of tahajjid thinks he's better, the person of praying, fasting Monday and Thursday, he thinks he's better. There's people who can't do either. They can't fast Mondays and Thursdays. They can't wake up at tahajjid. But every time they go in the street and they see a beggar, they see somebody asking, they see someone miskeen, they give them money. They're generous. Who's better? Only Allah knows. But it's very quick for us to look at other people and say we're better. Because some people don't have strength to carry out these levels of ibadah. But they have very good characters. Maybe they're doing their minimum, they're praying their salah, they're doing all the right things they're meant to do. But when they go out, their character is beautiful. They smile, they speak nicely, they don't speak badly of people. Who's better? I'm going to keep this theme going through. Who's better? Because none of us knows. None of us knows. And the danger is, if we think that we're better, then we're going to fall into that trap of an akhairun mim. Some people will go out and they'll smile. Some people will be kind to people. Some people will open the door for someone. Some people follow the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu that when they see small children, they engage those small children. Some people, when they see small children, will give stern, desi-style faces and get out of my mosque. Others will rub their heads. Who rub the heads of the children? Rasulullah Who welcome the children? Rasulullah So, there are acts of obedience, acts of ibadah, that we may think are better or worse than others, but truly, as I said before, only Allah knows. Some people have been gifted by Allah that they have amazing writing abilities. You read their scholarly works and you think, SubhanAllah, this is amazing. This must be a pious person. Some people are given the gift of the gap and they can deliver dynamic speeches. But some people may be introverts. They can't give a dynamic speech. Some people may be not gifted with writing. Does that mean that they can't deliver da'wah? Of course not. Maybe the introvert who is kind and generous and cares about his colleagues and his fellow humans is at a higher level than the dynamic speaker or the writer. Only Allah knows. We keep saying it, only Allah knows. Because these are judgments that sometimes we start to make in our societies. 
We start to make judgments based on the things that we think make someone better or make someone worse, but only Allah knows deep down in their hearts what's going on. Many professionals nowadays, they don't have time to go away and learn deen. So the Talib al the, the students of knowledge, they look at the professionals and they say, oh, these people, they're so busy in their work, they're not, they're not studying knowledge, they're not memorizing Bulugh al-Maram and, and uh, Riyadh al-Salihin and, and imparting this knowledge to people. But that professional, maybe in his working life, he has a good adab and akhlaq, and he gives da'wah through that, rather than the direct knowledge of hadith and Qur'an. Who's better? Only Allah knows. If one person comes to Rasulullah said, if one person, you, one person comes into the fold of Islam by your efforts, it is better for you than the world and all it contains. Subhanallah. So we don't know what small things may be so beloved to Allah that they outweigh everything else that we, we may see in front of us. Old people in our community. There were a time in our past where our elderly were revered, respected. Now, they're ignored. We now have Muslim elderly in old people's homes. Something our ummah never heard of before. Being forgotten about, being ignored, being pushed to one side. Even if they're in our homes and not being ignored in, in the sense of putting in old people's homes, maybe they're being ignored because their views no longer count. But who knows? Maybe they're a bit older, maybe they're a bit grumpy. But who knows the wisdom, the care, the things that they bring to the table that Allah is so pleased with and we're ignoring them and shoving them to one side. Who's better? Only Allah knows. SubhanAllah, all of these things, these are things that I'm bringing that we see in front of our eyes. Everything we've mentioned so far are things we see in front of our eyes on which people judge. How many times I can tell you that sisters have come to me and said, oh, so-and-so said I'm just a mother. I'm not, I'm not working as a civil servant or a, or a banker or a financer. I'm just a mother. Just a mother? SubhanAllah. Jannah lies at your mother's feet. SubhanAllah. Allah says after obedience, Allah comes what? Birr al Why? Because this is the status of parents. And who knows that person who we may say, she's just a mother, she's just a housewife. Maybe the patience in putting up with her husband and her children. Maybe the khidmah that she does in making everything nice for them. Maybe all of those things are more beloved to Allah than the tahajjud of the first person we mentioned or the da'wah of the da'i. Who knows? Only Allah. None of us are in a position to judge what is and what isn't accepted by Allah. Only He, subhanahu wa ta'ala, will ultimately judge. So when we say don't judge a book by its cover, we have no right to judge anyone by whatever cover we wish to put on them. Because the truth is, all of these things come from the heart. And no <coughs> human being can look into the heart of another. So what's the point? What is the point I'm trying to make here? Don't ever look at somebody else and think that you are superior to them because of what you do. Because the second you do that, the moment the person who prays Jummah <coughs> looks at the person who doesn't pray Jummah and says, well, I pray Jummah, I'm better than you. What did you just say? The same phrase of who? Ana khayrun min. I'm better than him. Shaitan. And that trait becomes pride or arrogance. Rasulullah warned us that anyone who dies with an atom's weight of arrogance, kibber, in their hearts, We'll never smell Jannah. This arrogance creeps up on us in ways that we don't even realize. This arrogance comes to us from different roots. Sometimes shaitan will come to you and say, you're praying to Hajjah. You shouldn't even be in the company of these people who don't even pray five times a day. You're better than them. His phrase, you're better than them. And a khair of men. And how comfortable it is to feel that you're better than someone. I pray I'm better than her. I have a beard, I'm better than him. I wear hijab, I'm better than her. Whatever it may be. We have all these yardsticks by which we decide that we are better. Even in our societies, we'll point fingers and so over. So and so is like this. How do you know? Look at the way they're dressed. Astaghfirullah. Do we have the right to judge on somebody's dress? Can you look into the heart and see the maqam of the person by their libas? No. 
No one knows the situation of anybody else. The problem that we have now, it's one of the favorite things of shaitan. When we're busy looking at each other and finding faults with each other and pointing out the faults with each other and refuting one another and saying so and so is upon this and so and so is upon this, you're so busy pointing outwards. That finger that's pointing out, you forget the three fingers have pointed back at you. The example of Rasulullah and his companions, may Allah be pleased with them. You never found any of them pointing the fingers at others. They only concerned themselves with themselves. Umar al-Khattab, radiallahu anhu, the mighty Umar, the oak Umar, the one who Rasulullah said, had there been a prophet that would have come after me, it would have been Umar. When he was concerned about the list of the munafiqeen, the hypocrites, what was his concern? He didn't want to go and say, oh, I bet brother so-and-so is on that list. He had only one concern. First, remember who this is. He is one of the Ashratul Mubashra, one of the ten promised paradise in his lifetime. He is the second Khalifa of Islam. He is the one who, Rasulullah said, I have two viziers from the heavens and two viziers from the, from the earth. My viziers from the heavens are Jibreel and Mikael and my viziers from the earth are Abu Bakr and Umar. This is the maqam of Umar and he only concern that he has with the list of the munafikin is, am I on it? Am I on it? He didn't care if anybody else is on it. He cared, am I on it? Don't judge a book by its cover. Only Allah knows the status of somebody from their heart because that's where piety lies. Everything on that list that I've just given, they are outward appearances of piety, but no one knows what is in the heart. No one knows. Which is why the very famous hadith, very famous hadith about the three people who will be entered into Jahannam, the first are what? The scholar. So let's give the categories, the so-called scholar, the so-called mujahid, and the so-called generous person. I'm paraphrasing for you. Why? Why are these people? Because the scholar's intention was to be seen by the people. That's why he learned knowledge, to, to, to be seen by the people. The generous person, the person who is giving in charity, why? To be seen by the people. And the mujahid, why? Because he wanted to be known as brave. So we can't look at the act alone and say so-and-so is pious. And worse, we should never look at ourselves and say, because I do this, it makes me better than so-and-so. We have no idea what everybody else is going through. We have no idea about everybody else's maqam. Don't ever judge a book by its cover. Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, Wa Salatu Wa Salamu Ala Ashraf Al Mursaleen, Khatam Al Anbiya Wa Rahmatul Alameen, Sayyidna Wa Habibana Wa Shafiyana Wa Mawlana Muhammad Wa Alihi Wa Sahbi Ajmaeen. Amma Bab. Nowadays, subhanAllah, we use even other criteria, not even our own deeds. We've talked about the people of Tahajjad and fasting and, and zakah and praying, all of those things. Yes, the, those people, they think that they're pious because of, these th- because of these things that they're doing. But we said, don't judge a book by its cover. Now we have people who say, because I belong to this group. Now we're not even going to a deed. Because I'm affiliated to this group, it makes me better than you. Because I follow this madhab, it makes you better than you. Because I follow this manhaj, it makes me better than you. All of these things will go back. We've said it three times already. For the fourth time, any time I think it makes me better than you, I'm better than you. Ana khayrun min. I'm better than him. Go look it up in the Quran. Ana khayrun min is the original sin of shaitan. Ana khayrun min. I'm better than him. So the moment we think our group makes me better than you, if you're attached to a group, a madhab, a manhaj, a khanka, a jamaat, whatever it may be, if you're attached, its purpose is not to hit other people with and say, I'm better than you. Its purpose is to crush the ego, the pride, and draw you closer to Allah. If it's doing the opposite, 
If it's making you arrogant and proud, then being affiliated is the worst thing it could do to you. Because this will lead to destruction. It's meant to annihilate the nafs, annihilate the ego. All of these ways are the, the routes, the roads towards Allah's pleasure. There are people, brothers and sisters, and I know we've used these stories before, but it's worth repeating again. There are people who we may belittle them because of their status. There are people we may belittle them because of their profession. There are people we may belittle them because we think that we're better than them. And yet, we have examples from the sunnah of Rasulullah of people who we would belittle and not understand the enormity of their deeds who end up in Jannah because of them. Let me just give you an example. Very quickly, we know the story, so I'm going to paraphrase it very quickly just to remind you. When Rasulullah was sitting with the companions... And he said to the gathering that the next person who will enter our gathering will be a person of Jannah. Sahaba were looking, who's it going to be? And a Sahaba whose name was unknown to us walked in at that moment. SubhanAllah, the companions were surprised, wondering what it is that's going on with them. So one of them chose that he would want to go and see what makes this person a person of Jannah. So he went to stay with him and he observed him. And he observed him and he watched him thinking this must be praying the Qiyam the whole night. And he prayed a little bit and he went to sleep. And he watched all of his observations, wondering, what is it that this person is doing? What is it that this, this Sahaba is doing that is going to make him a person of Jannah? And he observed all of these things and he couldn't work out what it was. I'm paraphrasing the story to make it easy and quick. So he asked him, he says, I don't know what it could possibly be. But one thing I do know, listen very carefully, is that every night when I go to sleep, my heart is clean towards every other human being. His heart was clean. Qalb salim. Allah tells us in the Quran about those who will enter Jannah will enter with qalb salim. A purified heart, a pure heart. Qalb salim. He had one thing which I think, subhanAllah, we should all be jealous of. Having qalb salim. He had no ill in his heart towards anyone. No matter who they were, no matter what they've done, he had qalb salim. And that was enough to enter him into Jannah. It wasn't his Qiyam, it wasn't his Siyam, it wasn't his, his uh, Sadaqah, it was this Qalb Salim. Let me tell you how important this Qalb Salim is. Rasulullah said about Abu Bakr as Sadiq, one of the two viziers that I just mentioned, he said to the other companions, I don't say that Abu Bakr is better than you because of his Salah, his Siyam. Rather I say Abu Bakr is better than all of you because of what is in his heart. Bakr, subhanAllah, radiallahu anhu, had the cleanest of the hearts. And there are many things we could talk in detail about what that meant, the, 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 uh, what's in his heart. I'll just touch on that for one moment. But there are many, many other layers which on another week, occasion we can go to. But I wanted to bring one more to us. Just to really drill this home about how we become judgmental. How we look at other people's behaviors. How we look at other people's professions. How we look at other people's jobs. How we look at other people's dress. How we look at other people's ethnicity. How we look at other people's groups. And we look down upon them and we say, Ana khayrun min. Every one of us knows the story of the prostitute and the dog. The prostitute who took water from the well. And having drunk the water, she sees the dog thirsty with its tongue lolling out. That's how much thirst the dog was suffering. And she returns to the well, into the well. She fills her shoe and she gives water to the dog. And through giving water to the dog, she attains Jannah. This act of mercy. Have we ever wondered why the prostitute and a dog? I've mentioned it before, but I'll mention it again. The prostitute is universally not seen as a high uh, profession to be in. No one goes and has a daughter and says, I hope one day she will be a prostitute. It's seen universally in every culture as a low profession. The dog is seen almost universally as a lowly animal. Even in a society where you have dog lovers who love dogs so much, they will sleep in the beds. The word dog is not you. He's a filthy dog. She's a bitch. These, things, these are not seen as high words to be used about someone. So you had the worst of professions feeding water to what many societies see as a lowly animal. And still, it attains Jannah. Why? Because it was pleasing to Allah. And it was done for the sake of Allah. And it was mercy to the creation of Allah. And yet anyone who looked now, if we walk down a street 
in London and saw a prostitute, how many people would look down their nose? How many people, when the dog comes, particularly Desis, would run a mile, ah, Najessa, Najessa, and we'd run away from, from the dog? We have to recognize only Allah truly knows what is in someone's heart. Someone could walk through the gates of Jannah with deeds that we wouldn't even give consideration to. And we wouldn't even realize they were going there. And perhaps they're ahead of us. And maybe our pride and our arrogance might stop us at the gates before we even get there. So we have to remind ourselves where we started this conversation, don't ever judge a book by its cover. Let Allah be the judge and let you and I, first and foremost, focus only on ourselves. Because the reality of our lives is we have to change our condition. Our condition is the only thing we can change, the only thing we can control. But if we do make an effort to make this change in ourselves, profound things can happen. If we focus on ourselves, improving ourselves, Allah tells us what can happen when He says, Allah will never change the condition of a people, a qawm, until they change what's in themselves. So today, I pray, inshallah, we will all make an intention that we will change what's in ourselves. Not focus on anyone else, not judge anyone else, not look at anyone else's cover and say what we determined to be inside. But say, Ya Rab, let me look inside myself. Let me see where I am. Let me wash this arrogance away. Let me wipe it from my heart. And let me from now on do only what is pleasing to you, for you. To Allah. We ask Allah to increase this in Iman. We ask Allah to increase us in Ihsan. We ask Allah to increase us in Taqwa. We ask Allah to make us amongst those who don't point fingers at others, but rather point only at ourselves. We ask Allah to be amongst those who when we make a change in ourselves, Allah changes our condition for the better. We ask Allah to be amongst those who are sincere to only wish to please Allah in everything that we do. We ask Allah to make us like Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa who loved the sinner but disliked the sin. And this is the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa Not to judge the person but rather the act. We ask Allah to alleviate our suffering. And the suffering of our brothers and sisters in humanity. And our brothers and sisters in Islam. Wherever they are and whatever situation they may be in. We ask Allah to make every single one of us. Shining ambassadors. For the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And for the beauty of the deen of al-Islam. We ask Allah to make every single one of us. Mindful. Conscious. Aware of you, our Lord, at all times, and to become the people of Taqwa. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasanatam, wa fi al-akhirati hasanatam, wa kina adab al-lar. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad, wa ala ala Muhammad, kama sallayta ala Ibrahim, wa ala ala Ibrahim, inna kaahum idamijid. Allahumma barik ala Muhammad, wa ala ala Muhammad, kama barakta ala Ibrahim, wa ala ala Ibrahim, inna kaahum idamijid.